Of course I want Gon's ghost in my army, but I'm playing Krieg, so I'm gonna kit bash stuff together and make them still look like Gon's ghosts. And I'm gonna base this off the standard Death Call of Krieg box, the Kill Team Veteran Guardsman box as they call it. But I want the positions of the models to be very similar to Gon's ghost, so they're more recognizable for me and my opponent. But it's very easy, I think. First of all, Larkin, the sniper, is of course gonna be the sniper. That makes sense. It's a very easy conversion, I think. Probably the easiest one in the box. Brag, I think, is good with this one. It's a similar pose, very dynamic, very holding the gun, and I just have to swap out that plasma gun for some kind of auto cannon, some big gun over there. Then we have Colm Orbeck, the colonel. Um, I think it's this one. The sergeant veteran, uh, he has a similar pose and I think it just makes sense to also use the sergeant veteran model for the guy who is supposed to be leading Gon's coast mainly. Then we have Ron. He is standing there with a dagger. It's a very static pose. He's pretty much standing still. So I think this guy would fit his pose very well. And of course the sergeant scout. I'm going for the other kneeling guy. It is not exactly the same pose, but it makes sense in the context of him being more of a scouting model. So I'm gonna start assembling these things and then I'll show you what sort of bits and pieces I'm using to level up these guys and make them really look like Gaunt's ghosts. Now Gaunt's ghosts are of course the cream of the crop, but these guys look too much like regular Death Corps of Creed troopers. So I'm gonna give them some armor. And to do that, I have to scrape off this box on the front where the gas mask intake is. So I'm just taking a blade and just start scraping this off. And here's a little tip. Before you start cutting, put a band-aid on your thumb because now this is a fresh new blade and it's not cutting through the band-aid. And you don't cut yourself. So you can be much safer that even if your blade slips, you're gonna be okay and it's not gonna cut into your thumb because if you do, then the rest of the day you can't unlock your phone anymore. Your girlfriend starts calling you and you can't message back you'll get in trouble. So, little safety tip from an experienced kid basher. Trust me, I got the scars on my thumb to show you. But when this is scraped off, what we do next is we get these little kits for the armor. And these are amazing. This is fantastic stuff. This comes from Tiny Legends, and he is a printer who specializes in a lot of Krieg bits and pieces, but also some really cool stuff for Death Watch. But this, first of all, is numbered. So this is number one, and this is miniature number one from the Krieg booklet. So this fits perfectly to this model. And they come in sets of 10, they all fit perfect to all 10 models in the Krieg box and it will just make you guys look so much cooler. They get armor and they look amazing. Let me show you. Now doesn't that look so much better than before? He has nice armor plating and it's still rough. It still looks like real deathcore of Krieg armor. It's not suddenly Acadian. But wait, there's more. Tiny Legends also produces these amazing skull-faced helmets because you need different helmets because normal Krieg helmet has the gas mask hose go down to the belly. Now you can't anymore because there's armor there, so it's going onto the back. I'll show you these helmets as well. There, again, absolutely perfect fit. This didn't require any scraping or cleaning of the Death Corps of Krieg body, and the helmet is positioned exactly the same as the original model. Now this might be harder to see, but let me get this guy over here. I already did one like this, and this is the result you can get. Like really cool armor plating, a real skull face helmet. These guys will stand out from a mile away. Here, look at that. Now you can see even still the white skull mask that he's wearing. It's really cool, and I'm going to do this for all of my Gaunt's ghosts, because I really want them to look like absolute elite, the best of the best of the best. And then we'll continue. I'm gonna start with Colonel Korn, but I wanna show you this. A little backpack, again, from Tiny Legends. Fits perfectly, lines up perfectly with the hose from the gas mask. It's amazing. And this is starting to sound like an advertisement for Tiny Legends, it's not. They didn't pay me, they didn't contact me. There's no sponsorship, there's no affiliation, nothing. I bought all of this myself, but I did contact them when I had this idea for Gaunt's Kriegers. I contacted them and they gave me a discount code for anybody who wants. I'll put it in the description and in the comments below, but it's Fog of Core minus 15. So if you want to get 15% off on any of these bits, use that discount code. So Colonel Korm, he has his gun sort of in one hand and he's pointing with the other. And the beauty is this set here with hotshot last guns has a gun in one hand. So perfect for Colonel Korm. It's not pointing in the right way, not in the right direction, 
but it's good enough for me and it definitely needs a bayonet but those are available in the Krieg kit and then I'm just gonna add an arm over here maybe the actual arm of the sergeant that these this, this the body is from sticking out instead of the sword I'm gonna use one of these hands and you guessed it they're from Tiger Legends but it's got fists and sort of hands pointing not exactly like on the corner not with fingers but the whole hand which in my opinion is good enough I'll show you the results. So, Colonel Corum, done. Here you can see him. He's got a gun in one hand, a nice bayonet, the other hand sticking out, giving orders to the rest. And I added these hoses to make it really look like the hotshot last gun, because every model in Gaunt's Ghost has a different gun, which is amazing if you have to play it and roll everything separately. But at least he's got an extra point of AP, which you know, makes sense to give him this hose and get it powered from that backpack. Next up, Prague. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this model and I'm going to stick a massive gun on him that will make it look as if he's firing it from the hip. Same as the original with the auto cannon. And again, I'll use hoses to connect it to his backpack and make it look like he is carrying a pretty powerful weapon. Let me show you. And that's a pretty solid come again, Brag. Try again, Brag. And well, it's time to go for a walk. I'll continue with Gaunt's Ghost after this. Hey, people. So that's Try Again Brag done. I think he looks cool. He has a massive gun. And even though it's not really an auto cannon, this is supposed to be the hotshot, uh, what is it, volley gun? Hotshot volley gun. It's good enough for me. This looks like a massive gun and he's recognizable from a distance as Try Again Brag. So McCall, uh, the issue here, he comes with a dagger and he has his gun on his back. I don't really like the dagger for Deathcore of Krieg, so instead I'm using this mace that you get with the uh, kill team box. The upgrade sprue has this for the bruiser. It's one issue with it. It's supposed to kind of stick out to the side like this, which I don't think is a nice pose if he's sitting on his knees. So I'm gonna glue on the arm, but then I'm gonna snap off the or clip off the hand, turn it around a little bit and make the mace sort of point down kind of like that while keeping the arm like that. So that's an easy fix. And then on the other side, I'm just going to give him this little booklet and make him a zealot. Cool. There we go. Good enough for me. Uh, I think the main thing that's missing is the tree, but I got a forest pretty close to my house. So I can go for a walk and find some nice branches to make him look even closer than the original. I have some tree branch over here and a tree branch sticking out. I think that will bring him close enough. Now this weapon is also the weapon that Ron uses. So I'm just going to use another one of these bruiser arms and I'm gonna see what I can put on his right arm. Okay, this was much harder than I thought. All the cool bits and pieces that Death Corps of Creek can hold, they hold in their left hand, and that's where he is holding his mace. So, the only bit that they have they hold in the right hand is this little booklet, which I already used. I don't wanna use it again. So, he's throwing a grenade now. It's not really what I wanted. They're more of a stealthy to team, but if you can have an auto cannon, you can have a dude throwing grenades as well, of course. Now. Larkin, Sniper, I already did him. I did him before I started recording. But this is another set of really cool bits by Tiny Legends. This cloak and this special sniper rifle is part of it. And it comes with the same sort of helmet. And the cloak comes with this input for the gas mask as well. That is the same as these that they have. So he fits perfectly. And the good thing is he now already has a cloak. The others, they'll get cloaks, don't worry. But it's first time for Commissar Gaunt. And Commissar Gaunt is the one where I'm really not going to care about the original pose because I don't really care for the original pose. I don't think it really fits Gaunt's Ghost's unit. They're all fairly stoic, very stable standing there, very stealthy. And then Gaunt is just standing there yelling and screaming with his chainsword and his pistol. Doesn't make a lot of sense. And it really doesn't make sense to me for a Death Corps of Krieg Commissar. That guy is just standing still, faces the danger, without yelling and screaming. So what I got here, this is all Tiny Legends. I hope my local shop owner doesn't know this, it's all printed, but this is a really cool Commissar body. It has a nice a cuirass, nice chest plate, and it has a sash, just like Gaunt. And then I got here a Commissar hat. I got all the bits and pieces. I got a chainsword that is nonchalantly slung over the shoulder like that. I'm gonna glue it all together, show you the results. And there we go, Gaunt's Kriegers or Krieg Ghosts. I'm still not 100% sure what I should name this unit. Maybe if you got an idea, leave it in the comments below. You can use some inspiration here. But these guys are ready to paint and I got a pretty epic paint scheme for these. 
which is a sort of midnight blue and I think that will look cool not only just for them but also as part of the rest of the army here see my other elites are green my regular infantry is gray my officers are black my artillery crews are brown and now Gon's ghost will get an, a unique paint scheme at least unique in my army with midnight blue and this is starting paint this is night lord's blue of course and i just dry brush this on very quickly it's not a, almost not even a dry brush it's almost more like a base layer but roughly done with this round dry brush so that a little bit of the uh, base coat, which is the Vallejo Dunkel Grau, dark gray, is still shining through a little bit. And that way you get a nice rough texture for this coat, which I particularly like on my minis. And after this, then we do a little dry brush of Stormfang. And I'm doing this with a light dry brush, like flat dry brush that gives me a lot more control than the round one I used before and make sure I only hit the highlights. And then after this, well, I've been hitting a lot of bits and pieces of the mini that I don't want to have blue at all. So it's time for a little bit of cleanup. Starting with a little bit of Black Legion for all the armor and all other metal parts, such as the gun and the backpack that he has. I just want to use this to cover up the blue that I dry brushed on there, because then next I can go over all the parts that I want to have a little bit lighter with some Rock Art Flesh. And I'm using Rock Art Flesh for two reasons. One, it's going to be the base color of these hoses. And secondly, it is a pretty light color that covers fairly well. If you want to paint over dark with white or some bone color, you're going to need layer after layer after layer, unless you do this little trick where you start with a paint that covers much better than the white. And then after that, you go over it with the actual color that you want. So I'm doing the boots, the gillies, the, the, the wraps around his shins, the hose, the mask, all of this gets a layer of rock art flesh. And then next up, it's time for a little bit of color. And I'm going to start with some Maisie Desert on the boots to give him nice Timberlands. Then flayed one flesh on any canvas parts, such as the wraps around his leg, but also the mask, followed by Dumbo brown for any leather parts such as his gloves but also any leather straps he might have on his gear and a belt for example and then finally rune lord brass for these tiny details such as the aquila on his helmet and on his chest armor some decal softener on the shoulder pads so i can apply a few decals because even gaunt's ghosts become a number in the death core of krieg and i'm adding a few campaign badges here and there as well throughout the whole squad Kind of resembling that they haven't been all together, just like Ghost Gons have all been together for a long time. I'd rather want to present them as sort of veterans, survivors of countless battles that have now been put together in a squad for special, uh, special missions. And I can't seem to get this decal off the plate. There we go. So 291st on this shoulder and then some squad and honor markings on the other shoulder. And with a knife, I then scratch out little bits and pieces of these decals because they're way too neat and pristine to just sit on a miniature like this, especially because I like a bit of damaged miniatures. I like a bit of wear and tear, a little bit of grim darkness. And these perfect decals, they just stand out like a sore thumb if you don't roughen them up a little bit. Then I continue weathering with a light dry brush of silver on all the metallic parts. So not just the armor, but also the helmet, the backpack, the weapon, all of it gets a dry brush of silver. And I do this roughly and quickly so that it just looks like there's plenty of battle damage and the black of the weapon is starting to scrape off. And then after this, we continue weathering with some rust streaks. And Rust Tricks is just a nice dark brown rust paint from AK Interactive. Usually used to make Rust Tricks, as the name says, but it's also great for a little bit of pin wash and a little bit of rust around all these little balls that, uh, that he has in his armor and little bits and pieces of the weapon. And it works well as a little wash as well if you want a dark brown rust wash over your mini. And I just think this adds a little bit more of wear and tear in all the right places. As you can see, I'm just going here where two plates of metal meet. I add a little bit of rust here under his shoulder pad, two plates of metal meet, do a little rust. It accentuates those deeper recessed areas of the mini, shows rust, and so it also creates a little bit of a, a contrast between the highlight and the recessed parts of the mini. And of course it shows wear and tear, which is you know something I really want on my minis. Now next up, 
contrast Militarum green on all the hoses and the pipes. The stuff that comes out of his gas mask, but also these hoses that go to the gun. And I'm doing this after the weathering at this point in painting the Mini, because this is all pretty close to the armor. So there's a good chance I would have hit this with the silver and now I can just paint over it and I don't have to clean up again and again, paint over again and again. And I can just do everything in one big step. So Militarum green here and then next up, a bright white on the skull mask that these helmets come with. And this is one of the things I really love about the Tiny Legends helmets is the actual skull pattern here. It looks so cool and painting them bright white makes them stand out from a mile away on the tabletop. You really see that these guys wear skulls and that they are the elite of the elite. And with this, almost all the paints on the miniature are done. I still need to do a bit of weathering and griming and so on and so forth. But I'm gonna start working on the base real quick first. And I'm using Sterling Mud to make just a very thin layer. And on top of that, I'm gonna add some dead Cadian bits. And in this case, I think I'll go for a nice helmet or something, just to signify that it's been a bit of combat here already. And if you wanna know why, I suggest you subscribe to my channel because I'll do a big army showcase once I'm done with everything that also involves all the lore, everything that's been going on here, this battlefield where my Cadians are fighting. I think I'll put a little dagger here in the mud left behind by some trooper as well. And then I'm gonna let this dry for a little bit. And then a bunch of other basing pieces and bits later, this is what I'm left with. And I wanna show you just from the top down camera what's there. Uh, it's the helmet over there. I put a little barbed wire thing here, which I really like this this stuff It comes from green stuff world and it's just five meters of barbed wire at scale and it's really great you wrap it around a Brush like this for example and you get a piece of barbed wire that you can cut to size and then I just put a little rust streak paint over it The same I used for the armor to get a little bit of rust in there And I think it looks really cool and these wet spots on the base That's not stuff that's still drying that is puddles from AK interactive this stuff It's great. It dries up glossy and so you can make puddles out of it just to make this bombed out Piece of no man's land that he's standing on look even worse now what I want to do is make his uh, overcoat a little bit darker. I said I wanted to paint the midnight blue and this for me is still a little bit too bright. I need to have a little bit darker and so I'm going for this panel liner for green and blue vehicles. I think it's called from uh, AK Interactive and I'm just gonna start to go over the whole model with this a little bit and then I'm gonna reduce it a little bit with streaking grime just to get it a little bit darker and we'll turn this very nice dark shade of midnight blue. And then I think most of the painting is really done and it's time for the cloaks. And for the cloak, I'm using cheesecloth. I just happen to have cheesecloth because I was making limoncello, but you can also use a gauze bandage. It's kind of the same sort of material. And this is folded double, just to be clear, so that I have a little bit more volume to work with. And I took this outside and I sprayed it with two kinds of green. I happen to have two green spray cans, a goblin green and something more like death guard green. And it worked out pretty well. It gives me a reasonable camo look. And I don't need a proper camo pattern on these cloaks. I don't think Kriegers really bother with camo patterns. I'm gonna cut this to size first. And this here is the shape I end up with. I've cut it a little bit, uh, a gap here for his head. And I'm gonna take some clues from this 3D printed cloak that I have on the sniper. This is one from Tiny Legends. So I wanna have this rebreather, this apparatus sticking outside of the cloak. I wanna have sort of look like the cloak goes underneath it. And then the rest goes over the shoulders. And in his case, I of course can't get the cloak under the hose anymore, so it's going over him. And I'm just going to drape it like this, and then push this front part down enough and try and sculpt it like that. And if I want to sculpt this, I got to first spray it with some PVA glue. And this is watered down PVA glue. I'm going to spray it with that, and that gives it a little bit of stickiness, but also hardens it when it dries. And Due to the cutting, you're using the scissors to cut this to size, you have all these frayed edges and with a little bit of glue, it's easy to sort of fold them in and make them less visible. It also makes it easier to fold the cloak underneath his skull mask, because of course I wanna have these skull masks showing. So I'm just gonna spray this with some watered down glue and it's watered down a lot, so it's very, very, very liquid. And just do both sides, make sure it's enough in there, let it dry for a little bit and then we start sculpting. Okay, let's go. I put a tiny droplet of super glue on both sides of his shoulder so that I can make sure that the cloak at least sticks to him. And now I'm just gonna drape it over him and it's still very, very wet, but 
the glue is starting to dry up a little bit and that's just the perfect time to start putting his cloak on. Now I got this little silicone brush just to help me sculpt the cloak a little bit, push it into the gaps where I can't reach with my fat fingers. And I'm just gonna sort of sculpt it in the way that Trigon Brag looks in, on the original model. So he has his cloak no longer draped over the shoulder, but I have to because otherwise I can't seriously fit it. And then it's kind of sticking out to the side and it is sort of billowing in the wind, folding in the wind. And this way, I wanna make his arm a little more visible. So push this way a little bit back. And I think if I can keep going like this, sculpt a little bit more, I'll have a model with a cloak that kind of looks like Try Again Brag. And I'm gonna do the same for the rest. I'll show you the results. And here they are with their cloaks. I think it worked out pretty well so far. It looks bigger and rougher than the original camo cloaks that Gaunt's Ghost have. They look a bit more sleeker. They don't go all the way to the ground. But I actually quite like this look for the Kriegers. They look like actual cloaks and not some special high-tech camo cloak. Now, this is the printed one, and this is the color I want to achieve. So these need a little bit of darkening down. And so it's time for Streaking Grime. And with Streaking Grime, I can really darken these cloaks down. And at the same time, keep them looking so rough as they are. I wanted to mention the PVA glue, the watered down PVA glue really helps with making these cloaks a little bit tougher. As you can see, I can move it still a little bit, but it kind of bounces back into place after I move it. The PVA glue also seals it, so it should, let's see, it should absorb less paint, making it easier to give it a little bit of a wash of streaking grime and not have the cloth just suck it all up. So I'm mixing streaking grime with some uh, white spirits and I'm starting here at the bottom. Clearly it's not sealed enough because it's soaking up all of the streaking grime really quickly, but that's okay. I can use this to draw some camo patterns and especially darken it down on the bottom and on the fringes and just make it look more dirty overall. I'll show you the results. There we go, a bit darker, a bit dirtier and more in line with the printed one that I have. But it's still lacking something. It needs some sterling mud to sort of blend the mini with the base. Because if you have sterling mud on the base, you have some sterling mud on your boots, on the lower parts of the cloaks for sure. So I got this really old dry brush here that I'm gonna use to just stipple on a little bit of the sterling mud here at the bottom. And I'm going to do it with all the cloaks and then puddles. Puddles I already used on the base to make the base look like it's wet, even after all the paint has dried. And I'm gonna use this on the cloak as well. Uh, of course, again, to tie the base and the miniature together and to make it look like this is really nasty wet mud that is caked to this cloak. I wanna make it look as if these guys are really not having a great time on the battlefield. It's muddy, it's nasty, uh, they're covered in mud, the clothes, everything gets covered. And so also their camo clay cloaks. And then after this, they look like this. And I'm really proud with how they came out. I love that they really stand apart from the rest of my Krieg army and they clearly gone goes with those cloaks. I decided not to add the trees because the base is already really full and there wasn't much space. It just didn't fit. But I think this is good enough. The individual models are recognizable. You know who's who when you put them on the tabletop. And of course, Commissar Gaunt is missing. I'm painting him in a separate video because I'm painting him the way I paint all my officers, black and brass, so it's easy to figure out which model needs to die when plasma pistol overcharging fails and somebody kicks the bucket. Don't forget, I got a discount code for all these bits and pieces from Tiny Legends, Fog of Gore, minus 15. Uh, you get 15% discount on all the bits, everything you buy there. There's lots of Krieg stuff, heavy weapons teams, alternate uh, gas mask helmets and so on, tank crews, bits and pieces. You will love it. If you like Krieg, go to Tiny Legends, they have amazing stuff there. And in the meantime, if I finish Commas or Gone's video, it should be coming right on the screen here. And if it's not there, well, then this video might still be interesting and entertain you until that video comes out.